and welcome to New Mexico Media Makers. This is the show that covers the broad variety of media industries in Albuquerque and New Mexico. I'm your host, Mike Gaba, and with me is my co-host, Catherine Palafas. Hey, hey Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> We're excited to welcome our first guest, local writer and producer, Joseph Bovensi. Thanks for joining us, Joe. Sure, thanks for having me on. All right, now, as we were t speaking earlier, you came a circuitous route around here from New York, no less. Correct. How'd that happen? Uh, family moved here. It was a retirement community, and that's how they all ended up in Rio Rancho. And Bovenzi's not a Swedish name. That's a good... That is not. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good Italian name. Okay, and your recommendation for best Italian restaurant? Um, I would probably say Pasta House in Rio Rancho. That a boy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're here to discuss a lot of projects that you're working on, and the first one, of course, is one that we actually have uh, a clip from, and right. that's New Mexico. Correct. The film. And I have to be honest with you, when I heard it before, New Mexico, I kept thinking that somebody, I had to ask him two or three times, the title, New Mexico, and I thought it was a story about a man with a lisp, <laughs> but it is not. No, it is not. Tell us what it's about. Uh, New Mexico is a film that was made after a book I wrote called An American Doper, and An American Doper is a book that I wrote because I had uh, got addicted to meth for three years and it just took everything from me. It was terrible. And I've been clean over seven years now and I felt like I needed to write parts of my story in that book and then of course it progressed into a short film called New Mexico. Congratulations. Wow. Thank you. I mean that's so brave I would think to, to deal with those demons and then to publish them in a sense, you know, to, to, right. to come out with it. So it must have been cathartic for you as well. Yeah, well, you know, the whole process actually helped me a lot, uh, the writing process. When I started writing about it, I really wasn't thinking about publishing a book or having a movie or anything like that. So uh, it really helped me in the process, in the recovery process, to write that stuff out. And then it blended itself into a, a very good novel, and here we are. Wow. So now, is, as far as, is it always a demon that's present in the background somewhere when you've had an addiction? Is it something that, that you can even pull for, um, for no. inspiration? I, well, you know, honestly, I really think that the way it ended for me was horrible. It was the worst that it could ever be, and those demons will never come back in my life again. Yeah, it, was, it was a really bad experience. It ended horribly, and um, I couldn't see myself ever doing meth again. Wow. Well, we'd love to see a bit of it that you brought. Sure. So let's check that out. Let's do it. All right. Okay. With some grass and some coke, we'll perk up the city one more time. <laughs> Dominic, nobody does coke anymore. What? Really? So what's the drug of choice these days then? Well, Dominic, everybody's doing the meth. Wow. So now, from that scene, what are the actors, what's the background on that? Um, what's going on is the main actor, who is David Busey, he is portraying a character named Dominic Valerio, and he has run out of money. He's a retired drug dealer, and he has uh, been retired for six years, but because they've run out of money, he wants to do one more deal, and his wife will not allow it. Uh, he goes ahead and goes through with the deal anyways with tragic results. Mm. And that uh, other actor is And Anthony Ming Mingelino, and he is playing Dominic's uh, best friend and business partner. Wow. Yeah. So now, you, of course, you were on the set during then. Yes. Did, was, did you have a lot of input as far as the actors? Did you feel that they really got a grasp of oh, what it yes. was like? There was, a, there was definitely movie magic, as they say, going on with New Mexico. Everybody really molded so well together, and the actors were tremendous. The production team was superb. I mean, it just really went well. And you just wrapped this, right? You just put this in the we can? We just wrapped it, yep. So where does it go from here? Uh, we'll be hitting film festivals and, um, you know, that, that kind of thing, hitting the circuit and doing things like that. We're going to show it locally at some of the theaters in town, the independent theaters, and maybe spread it out from there in the region. Very cool. Now I understand you're also on your way to Africa eventually? Yes, Ethiopia. Oh, interesting. So tell us about that baby. Um, I was approached by a gentleman named Teklu Abraha, and he asked me to write his story. He was a child soldier that exiled from Ethiopia in 1990 uh, to come to America to start a new life. And uh, long story short, we're going to Ethiopia to film some footage for his documentary. And your career span right now 
going out of the country, going out of your comfort zone. What are you right. hoping to get out of this project? Um, I actually think that after speaking with these people for over the past year and communicating and having this very tight relationship, that it's actually going to be a very self-fulfilling trip. Uh, there will be some satisfaction just to see the world from a different aspect. Uh, it's much different there than it is here. So tell us about him in particular. Uh, he's, uh, he's living here now, right? Right. He lives in mm. Denver. And uh, he works in the medical industry. And a very intelligent man, very humble man. Um, I just find it amazing that after all these suffering and torture, life that was lost, um, these people had very huge families, and when there was a loss of life, it was huge. Uh, generations of people gone. Um, it just blows me away how humble Teklu is today, and uh, you know how he just goes through life with this humble demeanor. I really, really respect that. I've always been interested in how a writer and a producer, how you find your project. I mean, how do you find the material? Is it people that you go out and meet? Do, do they come to you? I mean, how does it? I, I got lucky. I mean, the last two writing projects that have been presented to me, they were they approached me, and we uh, contracted a deal, and that's how that happened. So so far, people are coming to me. <laughs> that's, and you are quite a writer. I mean, you're a very prolific writer. I, I guess so. And yeah. yo, sure you are. And you were telling me earlier that, of course, you got three books coming out right. next year. Three books in 2013. Um, they'll be spread out until the end of summer. Uh, first book is Tech Lou's book called The Gorilla's Journey. Second book is The Satan Conspiracy, which is a story about a man that was abducted by the occult. And then I penned a little mafia story that we're going by the writing name The Family Business. The Family Business. Yeah. So now being from New York, of course, you could easily make the association that there's lots of <laughs> mafioso background and that sort sure. of thing in there. Do you find that to be true or do you find it, it's something a tangent you can pick up anywhere in any community? Uh, I believe that I watched a lot of HBO as a kid, <laughs> and that's where Didn't my writing <laughs> ability and my very vast uh, imagination has come from. <laughs> well, I think it's great. I said earlier that, I mean, you can expose yourself like that for the material. That was tough, I got to admit. Do you not feel protective sometimes and think, I just don't really want to, to open that wound? No, um, I think that what I hope is that there's a lot of people out there that are still on meth, of course, and... Um, it is my hope that they'll read portions of that story, understand it, and maybe seek sobriety like I did. How do you find the recovery process in addressing that in New Mexico? Do you think that there's adequate uh, programs for that and Not help for that? Not at all. We, we have a very uh, small amount of recovery centers for people, and we have, of course, more addicts than we do recovery centers. So we're heard in New Mexico. We don't have any mental health uh, facilities that people can tap into when dealing with these problems. So yeah, we, we, need, uh, we need some help in New Mexico in that department for sure. Well, thank you for making a film to bring attention to that. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Now, you of course, you said you were writing some kind of gang, gangster sort of films and, and books and that sort of thing. So is it hard to get people to talk about that and kind of come up with that? And I mean, you were very open about it, but I would yeah. imagine some people are very hesitant. To well, the two people that uh, presented me uh, with their projects, they really wanted their story told. Um, the fellow from the Satan uh, conspiracy, he went through a lot of stuff, and he wanted people to know how these people operate, why they operate. I mean, we hear about abducted kids and people, and it's, ama it's just amazing the scope, of what they'll go through to get people. So he wanted his story told. Same with Tech Lu. He wanted his story told. He wanted people to know the sufferings that they went through in Ethiopia um, the things that happened, what they had to do to regain their country again. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think people just want to be heard. Do you find it difficult, I mean, as a, as a writer and a filmmaker, you're kind of in that in-between place because in relating to the subject, you have to make a film a certain way so that it's marketable. And then you have to right. write a book a certain mm -hmm. way. Does that get lost in the translation? Do you find oh, yeah. it? That you know, uh, Tech Loose from Ethiopia. I had a very hard time trying to figure out how I was going to display his story that everybody would understand it. So what I did was I developed a character named Jack Martin, and he is a very wealthy Australian man, and he ends up sitting next to Tech Lu in an airplane in 1993, and they fly to London. And it's when Tech Lu is going back to Ethiopia for the first time, mm. and his sister had died of AIDS, which is a true story. And um, Tech Lu ends up telling his whole life story to this gentleman on the plane. And that's how we got Tech Lu's story out there. So it, it's a very interesting read, a very nice, clean read. There is some ap appalling information in there about the way people were treated, 
So I warn you to put your seatbelt on. It might be a rough ride. <laughs> so it's true. Everybody's got a story to tell. Don't everybody you? has a story to tell. Absolutely everybody. Whether they get it out there or not, that's the key. Well, it's good to have storytellers like you around. You better yes. believe it. I love telling stories. I'll tell you my story later. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We'll shoot it. <laughs> well, let's take a quick break. And when we return, we'll be speaking with writer and director Scott Milder. Stay with us. There's more New Mexico media makers on the way.